Welcome to Human Potential at Work, the show where we explore social impact, inclusion, and empowerment of everyone, including persons with disabilities. Get ready to be inspired, hear success stories, and learn tips and principles for bringing out the best in everyone. Hello, everyone. This is Deborah Rue, and you're listening to Human Potential at Work. Today, I have a reoccurring guest. I have Doug Farasta, who is my producer and my really, really dear friend and my mentor, and he also is the host of Mind Talk. And you're going to be really seeing that a lot more. He has a bunch of episodes that he's going to put out all at once. And it's, it's a really powerful show. So um, I, I look forward to listen to the episodes. And I really recommend that you listen to them as well. He, it's all about, and, and Doug, instead of me talking about it, <laughs> maybe what you could do is for people that are not familiar with your work, maybe you can tell us who you are again. And also sure. talk about Mind Talk and what you sure. want to accomplish with that yeah. podcast. Absolutely. I was going to laugh because you said I'm a, a reoccurring guest. And uh, I, I'm, I'm grateful every day when I wake up and reoccur. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, we're all reoccurring guests. We're all reoccurring, exactly. <laughs> uh, until we're not, right? So, the, uh, so I am, uh, I'm Doug Foresta. I'm the producer. I'm Doug Foresta. I'm the producer of the show. And uh, I also, uh, as well, I'm a licensed therapist. And I've been, uh, the, the show that you're referring to is Mind Talk, which is, I wanted to make a show that's accessible for people, uh, but is about, you know, that, that shares kind of evidence-based practical um, tips about, you know, the, the basic philosophy of the show to me is that, you know, a big part of the central, in order to do the best work that we can do in our lives, we have to manage our own consciousness. We have to manage ourselves. And that's not always easy to do. And I, I think, as, especially my experience has been, as we get older, there's more stressors in life. There's more things to think about. And so, you know, bringing on all kinds of people, everything from, uh, you know, dealing with anxiety or depression or addiction or uh, this this uh, recording I'm doing this week is um, with a woman, Christine Hammond, who's a, a real specialist in dealing with narcissism. And mm -hmm. so uh, if you want to learn, like, what narcissism is and is there were people that you find in your life who just exhaust you, uh, and you feel like you're giving all the giving, you learn a little bit about what narcissism is and how to deal with, how to notice and deal with uh, people that are narcissists. So lots of interesting topics. I'm really excited about it. I'm really excited to be here today with, with you, Deborah, as well, of course. Yes, I agree. <clears throat> we always have really good conversations. And today we are going to talk about virtual, virtual networks and virtual, you know, communications and uh, uh, you know and virtual the, relationships too yeah relate right virtual relationships is even more powerful and um and, and i always think it's interesting that as good of friends as we are business partners and yeah. everything, we've never physically met physically even in the same room right which is very very interesting I and know. i meet people all the time that will they'll walk up and i'll think wait i you know i'll do a shout out for patrick hodge I have known Patrick Hodge on LinkedIn and social media for years. Right. But I just met him in person at M Enabling, the M Enabling Summit, which is such a great conference in DC. And I remember I walked in the room and I looked at this man's face and I thought, I know you. And he's <laughs> like, I know you too. So it's always so cool to meet people that I am friends with on social media. And yeah. wait a minute, can you be friends on social media with people that you have never met before. Right. It, it's such an interesting, and so many of my very, very close friends are like that. And, and it's sort of sometimes my brain's like, that is so interesting. You know, how does that work? But I believe in all the energy. You know, the scientists say we're all connected. And, you know, we have the wonderful social media and WhatsApp, and we connect, you know, Skype at any moment. Yeah. We're doing this on Zoom. Exactly. And so what is, the, how much, it, it, I, I watch a lot of um, science shows about what does this mean and what is next? And is, are we doing a little telepathy with all this? It's just fascinating. Well, stuff. and you know, it's interesting because it's not, it's not really a new issue. It's probably over a hundred years old because the, you just reminded me of a funny story when I, uh, when I was a young man and I went to a religious school, I uh, went to Orthodox Jewish school and and they told us about, it was the late 1800s, maybe early 1900s, and there was a, a rabbi in, in Europe who they wanted to know when, when the telephone first came out, 
they wanted to know whether you could use a telephone on the Sabbath because it says you're not supposed to light a fire on the Sabbath. So, you know, is that considered lighting a fire? So they, they asked this rabbi, and just to keep in mind that, you know, this guy lived in a small shtetl in Poland, you know, in this little, you know, little village in Poland. He'd never been outside of, you know, his little town. So he didn't know anything about, you know, the first thing about the telephone. And so they asked him and they said, can you use the telephone on the, on the Sabbath? And he said, what's a telephone? <laughs> and they said, well, a telephone is when I can, um, you know, hold, I can hold a device in my hand, right? Uh, on one side of the world and I can talk to my friend and he's on the other side of the world. Uh, and the rabbi said, absolutely not. You can't use it on the Sabbath and you can't use it on Sunday or Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or any other day either. And they said, why not? He goes, because surely such a thing is the work of demons. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And we now know that is for sure true. Yeah, right, right. That might be, <laughs> he might have been right. So, right. But, you know, he, he couldn't understand it, right? He, he, it was it's just too different. Head. And I think, likewise, it's interesting because, you know, I guess one of the central questions is about, you know, can you develop meaningful relationships using online communication? I guess a follow-up to that, though, is, you know, uh, another thought around that before we answer that question is, you know, social media, though, unfortunately, I think, does sometimes give us the false impression yes. that we are not alone when, when in fact, we are. There, there was a joke. I saw this cartoon, and it was a guy's funeral, and there was like four people, you know, sitting in the pews. And the one guy says to the other, he goes, you know, I would have thought uh, we'd have a bigger turnout. He had 5,000 Facebook friends. Right. And, you know, so, you know, what is a friend? What is a friend? What constitutes a relationship? Um, yeah, I mean, those are all. And, and I would wonder, Doug, is uh, are certain personality types or even the way we learn yeah. uh, better at it than others? I, right. I remember uh, that one day, uh, this is years ago, but. Um, there was an earthquake in Virginia, and it, it was it was we were six miles from the epicenter, so it did a little damage, just a little tiny damage to our house. Yeah. But the, the, I had a friend of mine that was actually at the epicenter, and it it was terrible. It she wow. her nobody can ever build on that land. They had a they had an eighteen hundred year old uh, farmhouse, and they built this gigantic wow. beautiful house, and it all got. It, it, it all got messed up and, you know, but yeah. they were not allowed to build there anymore. So wow. it, it was, it was really weird, but <clears throat> the, the point I was making, so for, for weeks afterwards, we had these aftershocks and, and I don't know why, but it just scared me at a core place. It, you yeah, know, sure. and I remember one night I woke up to the um you know feeling it and they've explained why the scientists explain why we can actually feel it more here on the east coast than they can in california it does with the plates and the way the you know the soil and everything so even the little ones we could sort of feel and so i felt it you know and it woke me up out of a dream and it scared me and so i didn't want to wake up my husband or my daughter yeah. or it, so i i got online and i'm like I just felt something. Anybody else? Feel? And I started tagging RVA because I'm um, outside Richmond, Virginia. And I took comfort talking to other people that I had, did not know about this. It made me feel safer. And yeah. I, I thought that was fascinating. I'm like, why are you feeling safer? But that's the way I process things. That's why my brain works is I, when I'm engaging with people, I'm learning. It's just my learning style. So I assume some of this, um, whether we have successful relationships or not virtual relationships, some of it does have to do with our brains and, you know, how we think um, and how yeah. we learn and all yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the other piece about that is that, you know, social media and, and online communication at this, it, it allows us to be more vulnerable and less vulnerable at the same time. So on the one hand, I might feel more comfortable revealing my true self behind, let's say, an avatar, right, or behind, uh, you know, behind something else. And in in the anonymity of the internet, I might actually reveal more about my own feelings. Or for anyone who's ever watched the show Catfish, uh, I might I might try to turn myself into something that I'm not. Uh, and you don't have to. It doesn't have to just be catfish. I mean, you know, on social media, so many times I was just talking to someone who said, you know. 
Uh, they were so unhappy in their marriage, but the whole time, you know, his wife was amazing on Instagram and they would post the most amazing pictures and everyone right. would say, you guys are so lucky. You have the perfect marriage. You have the best life. I can see it best, on Instagram. That's right. The best life. So it allows us on the one hand to be more vulnerable, but on the other hand, also to construct an identity, if we like, that isn't necessarily. Yes. That could get us in trouble. And before we move on, because I want to dig into yeah. that a little bit more, I for people that don't know what catfishing is, will you yeah. just give a, I yeah, mean, absolutely. I don't know if everybody knows, but just. Absolutely. No, it's a good. So there was, it was a movie first, actually, the movie Catfish came out. And the idea behind it was that it's people who, usually it's particularly in a dating context, people will uh, put pictures of someone maybe more attractive than themselves online and pretend to be someone that they're not. And this could go on for years uh, in some cases where the person will have a virtual relationship with the other person. There was one in the NFL, I remember, there was an NFL player who it turned out that it was a man. You know, he was having this online relationship with what turned out actually to be a, a man who was posing as a woman. Right. And that generated and a lot of controversy. Right. And it can get real out of hand and a lot of people yeah. can get hurt and people can get scammed Absolutely. and a lot of, a lot of bad things. And, and I, I saw a story, um, on, I, I don't remember if it was on 60 minutes. I love 60 minutes, yeah. but they were talking about this woman who had just had this looked like she had this perfect, amazing life and she was beautiful and she was well-traveled and and, you know, it was just amazing. She had all these followers, and then she commits suicide, and people are, like, stunned. And that and, happens all the time. I mean, that happens you know, all the that's time. that's so sad. It's so sad. Yeah. So, and then, of course, we have the bullying, and we've talked about cyberbullying and stuff on the show before. But one thing that I wanted to dig in a little bit more into it, and I know we've talked about this as well, is actually the value that virtual relationships can have for people with disabilities, especially with severe disabilities that yeah. might not be as mobile as somebody else, or maybe they don't communicate in a traditional way when you meet them face to face, but their true essence and personality can come out on social media yeah. and through assistive technology and tech for good and all that stuff. And that I think is very promising because we sometimes assume we understand who somebody is yeah and and you might be completely wrong we've used you know just a few of examples just on the show today yeah i i think you're absolutely right i think that the the possibilities for socialization um also for uh service delivery i mean you know for therapists to be able to to do a skype type therapy with people who can't get out of their home and wouldn't have access to services, uh, you know, but, you know, specifically when you're talking about socialization, right, it allows people, it gives them the freedom to connect with others, even if they can't be mobile, if they can't physically be mobile. So for that reason, I think that the possibilities are, are really very good. And I think there's a lot of ways in which it can be used. It can really be used for good and that there's a lot of positive aspects of, you know, as this continues, I mean, as we, as the technology gets better, it'll only help us connect even more. So, yeah, I think you're right. I think particularly for people with disabilities, the idea of, you know, having more methods of communicating with others remotely uh, is, a, is, is a good one. Yeah, because I think it breaks down the barriers. I mean, I have had a virtual relationship with Rosemary Musashio, who is our chief accessibility officer, and uh, she's just brilliant and amazing and she's mm -hmm. cheeky and she there's yeah Rosemary is a character just so multi-dimensional and I have met I've had the blessing to meet Rosemary in person <clears throat> excuse me multiple times but she communicates in a um in a different method than a lot of us do right and so she uses augmented um communications devices and stuff and she there's so much about Rosemary that you want to get to know. She's such an interesting person. Yeah. And often when people meet her in person, all they can see is the severity of her disabilities as opposed right. to seeing who she, this amazing woman is. Sure. And so <clears throat> I'm hopeful for people like her. And yeah. we have a, a new team member um, that LaMondre Pugh and LaMondre has uh there's once again he's this amazing amazing man 
Um, but he also has a severe disability. And he was telling me last night that he will have somebody come in <clears throat> and, and um, they will get him ready for work and stuff. And they place his hands where they need to be so that he can uh, navigate because uh, he has a little bit of movement where he can navigate the mouse and control the computer. And he sits there until the next um, support people come in at lunchtime. Yeah. And so yesterday this came up because he's um, he was demoing a new product that sounds very, very interesting that you can actually use your mouth to control the, the computer and stuff. And he said, you know, the thing that's such a blessing for me with that is that will free me up so that I can do more things in between when I'm waiting for, you know, yeah. the, his support workers. Yeah. And, but at the same time, there's also some really, really cool mainstream applications to something right. like this that will help everybody else. And I love that so much of the assistive technology and the technology that's created to support people with disabilities, especially severe disabilities, actually winds up adding great, great value to the rest right. of society. Right. And another reason why people with disabilities add so much value to society. And so there's bad that happens with all this. And there's a lot of people posing. I, I have people reach out to me every single day proposing to me, oh, I love your smile. <laughs> You You're know, a beautiful and, woman. I would like right. to, to uh, I'm a Norwegian. That. Yeah, I'm a I'm a prince. I'm a blah blah blah. Okay, yeah, I'm sure. Oh, we, we got all these billions of dollars, and I think you it's they belong <laughs> you to you. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, there's a lot of misuse of this as well. But let's be honest. I mean, you know, it's not like I love when people say, you know, online relationships are problematic. It's not like offline relationships don't have problems. <laughs> I mean, I've done couples work for many many years. You know, trust me, there's plenty of problems in offline relationships. So, you know, it, it, there are maybe challenges that are specific to relating to people online. But, you know, as you and I both know, Deborah, there's problems related to. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, mean, I definitely know this. Right? I yeah, mean, we're just, we're, we're, we're multidimensional human beings. Human beings. Right. We have Whether we're disabled good, or not. It, right. We all, we're using our brains in different ways. We're, right. it, I, I get annoyed. I get annoyed with my community that I love and my industry, uh, disability inclusion, because I still see corporations are trying so hard to include us, and I I applaud all those efforts. But the, the I am seeing the I'm seeing employers get stuck with the low hanging fruit. It's like oh no no no, no. we definitely included tons of people with disabilities, and they have. Yeah. People like me that have ADHD right. and depression, and these are all covered under the Americans with Disabilities right. Act and covered with the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. But what about the Lamandres of the world? That right. he adds so much value. And by the way, he's not available now. He now works with uh, Rupa. <laughs> That's Pat. right. Don't want anybody stealing him, but I know somebody's going to try to steal him because when society realizes who this man is, right. they're going to be, oh, no, 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 no. I want him. But Right. Doug, it's really discouraging to me that it has been so difficult for him to find meaningful work. Yeah, and there's an absolute, I mean, the stigma is incredible. And, you know, people can give lip service all they want to, mm -hmm. right? We include people and we're open and inclusive and blah, blah, blah. But the, the statistics show right. in the United States, I mean, what is the, what's the employment rate? Forget about the unemployment rate. Is it like about 30% for people with, dis with visible disabilities? <clears throat> oh no, my, it, it's much, 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 much lower. We, I mean, we've there's some really good reports and stuff, yeah. and and it there's a lot of variables associated with it. And I, by the way, understand that there are a lot of very talented people without disabilities that don't can't find good meaningful jobs. Right. I, I don't want to. But the unemployment that. rate is two like two point four percent in some places. In I agree, and so. and it's really the numbers uh, for people that have severe disabilities they're really bad they're really bad and we haven't really moved the needle right. much so it's and and this technology all these social media and all mm -hmm. this stuff that we're doing in skype and whatsapp and zoom and all this yeah. really really will break down the barriers but we have quite a few societal barriers still and that's why i think there's promise with virtual realities you know, virtual relationships in that way i think there's i agree th there's a lot of opportunity and value there yeah and i think being able to see other people 
you know, it really depends on how it's used. I think like you and I being on right now, we see each other, you know, we can talk to each other live. I think there's something really valuable about that, being able to hear someone else. Uh, one of the dangers in, that happens online is that it's very easy to not have empathy for someone if it's at arm's length. You know, it's right, like right. it's like you flip someone off on the highway. That's but, exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, but you're not going to do that because you're in the car. Because like, you're in the car um, and you're distanced. Yeah, so, it's like, and I don't see that as much, luckily, no, um, no, I as know. I used to. Certainly, but, I don't see it very much at all in Virginia. Right. That's um, good. I, I yeah. know it happens, but I'm also you don't, you don't an drive aggressive in driver. You don't drive in Massachusetts. Come here for a day and right. You know, there's cer It's interesting yeah. how there's certain communities. Like my son Kevin will even mention that he lives in the north side of Richmond, and then he'll come out to to the short pump area, which is a more inf influential area. It, it's more affluent, I should say, area. And he finds people are a lot more aggressive, not maybe as, um, I mean, he's got tattoos and not that I can talk about looking different. I got purple hair these days, but he, it's just interesting. You, the communities have energy associated they with do. And, and we have a name, we have a name for drivers here in my state. We call them mass holes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's a good one. So, I had not heard that. <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> so, you know, I, I think that like <laughs> everything else, we have to be mindful about how we're using technology. But the reality is, can you develop meaningful relationships online? Absolutely. I mean, you and I are a great I have, example of that. Right. I have. You absolutely can. Can you also use technology in a way that alienates you from other people? Yes. Yes, you can as well. You know, it's it's how it's used. It's the application and the invention, I think, behind it. That makes and, and I'll give you an example of something that I just thought was so clever. One of our team members, Jasmine, um, lives in the Philippines. Yes. And she had been watching what we were doing for a while, and she reached out to me on LinkedIn. And I, 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 I can't even, it's hard for me to keep up with the direct oh, yeah. messages and messages on social media. I don't try to ignore anybody. People are constantly coming to me, asking me. And it's, it's very overwhelming sometimes. But she came to me and she she offered to start helping me, you know, do the transcripts and stuff. And, and we built a really nice relationship. And I learned things about her life that, you know, I... I just did not know that I didn't understand. For example, she is a woman that's in the Philippines and she's blind and she right. cannot get a bank account. They will not wow. allow her to get a bank account. And because, you know, it's not secure, you're blind. And oh, I'm like, well, well, we know how to deal with this. And then I, I, said, know. I said, go to an international bank. And she right. said, oh, I did. Wow. And they said, no. And I'm like, what? So that's so incredible. She, it's weird, and, and there's still so much work to do. There is. And there's still so much work to do to break down the barriers of what it means to be a true human being, which we talk a lot about on this show and on your show, too. Yeah. And I, it, it is interesting because I think, sometimes, I think often about who my friends are, and some of my very closest, dearest friends are people that I've never met in person, or maybe I've met them just once or twice, or... It, I don't know. I, I'm fascinated by this. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I've said this before. I'm much closer to you than I am to my neighbors. Right, right. Yeah, I, me I, too. Like, me too. And, and I love my neighbors. And but. yet, right. And yet, I could like you know reach my hand out the window and touch their house. So right, right. Yeah, it, it's a very interesting phenomenon, isn't it? Yes, and your children, who I've never met, know me. That's I know your amazing. son Sam. You, and I Sam. love Sam. <laughs> Thank He's, you. I, I think Sam's amazing. <laughs> And um, and your daughters, I've had the pleasure of meeting your yeah, daughters. And that's your right. Beautiful, beautiful wife who is so talented, and oh, thank you. It, it's interesting. Right. It's it is very and and there are a lot of people that don't believe that this can happen, and, and there's also people that are getting discouraged and feeling like the world doesn't make sense to me anymore. I know your wife actually did a uh, she was writing a blog about suicide, the mm -hmm. children and. Yeah. You know, the teenagers committing suicide, you know. Right, and, and just like anything else, I mean, we can also, unfortunately, you know, there are kids, for example, who get involved in, uh, you know, there are, there are websites online, you know, where people will encourage you to commit suicide. So, you know, there's, I mean, but again, no, no. that's true, uh, and that's true IRL as well, you know, in real life as well. I mean, 
you can meet people who are great influences and you can meet people who are terrible influences. I mean, that's not really unique to the internet. That's just, right. you know, what I think is unique is the fact that we can now travel across the world, you know, instantly yes. to connect with others. And I see the potential for that to me way outweighs the, the negative. I think so too. And I think you've got to use common sense and you've got to be involved in your children's lives in a way that yeah. you're trying not to be intrusive, but you're trying to support them. And yeah. you know, we're all learning. We're all learning what this means and how we do it. And this is, you know, topics we're talking about here. You're talking about on your show. Yeah. And and we want to talk about this even more. So we're creating, a long, I mentioned LaMondre Pugh. He's creating a new series of shows. And boy, he's got a great voice. And, he does. you know, and Kevin he's doing something he calls wrong generation um, where he's really talking to millennials his age and there's a lot of powerful things happening but there's also a lot of negative and scary things happening too so i think we should continue this conversation but doug I agree. before we end would you mind telling the audience you know how they can learn more about your work and oh sure you? absolutely yeah i mean i would definitely just encourage them at this point I would love to get people listening to Mind Talk. So you can go anywhere where, where finer podcasts are sold. Uh, they're not sold. They're free. But you can go to Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher. Uh, truly, you know, you can just Google Mind Talk Podcasts and find it that way too. So, yeah, we would love to and would love to hear from you about any topics that you'd like to hear about or learn about. So uh, if people want to do that, they can just email me at Doug Foresta, D-O-U-G-F-O-R-E-S-T-A at gmail.com. Right, and we also will be putting all of the episodes on RuGlobal, R-U-H-Global.com, and, and we will be socializing them. We'll be making sure that we turn the volume up. And there is just, I think, a lot of reasons to be hopeful, but I'm always hopeful anyway. But still, there are a lot of things to be hopeful about. And, you know, you, you take someone like my husband that's walking this path with dementia, and it, it, it has some interesting opportunities there as well. So I, I think there's a lot that we're learning about how to be in a relationship and what it means. And these are the conversations we're having, but there's, you know, there's risks to it as well, which I guess is maybe just life, right, Doug? That is true. <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much for being on the show today. And thank you, Deborah. Always a pleasure. Yes. I look forward to continuing the conversation. So bye, everyone. Bye.